by the Spirit. If we want the power of God and the anointing of God and the Holy Ghost to move in our life and move in our church, we have to be led by the Spirit. You cannot be led by the traditions of men or what Sally thinks or Johnny thinks or Fred thinks. You've got to hear the voice of God. You've got to read the Word and know the Word and you've got to follow God in man. 
next people want what you have. Amen. 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 That's real. Hi, 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 What has Christ done to the handwriting and requirements that was against us since we have all failed to obey the holy law of God in our own strength and abilities? What did he do with it? Blotted out. out, nailed it to the tree. So what does that mean to y'all? What, 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 what was the handwriting that was against you? Thank you. Anything. Sin, death, all that was in you because it came from the Adam nature. You were born in the Adam nature. That's why you have to be born again. Are you with me? Adam nature is what you lived in when your mama gave birth to you and paddled your tail. That was Adam. You don't teach a child. Not that Adam. Sorry. You don't teach a child to lie. It's already in their nature. Because when they're born, they're born with that carnal realm. That's what works in you. Yeah, I've never had to teach not one of my children to lie. Acts 1 and 8, 
after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall want to chase signs. Your assignment was not to chase the sign. Your sign was to do, your assignment is to do the work of God and the signs will follow you. Right. right. Amen. That's what he says. Yeah. Right. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And people run all over the world and to hear one preacher that does right. something extraordinary. Yeah. They always forget the key factor that it wasn't the man nor the woman, it was God. Right. Right. And then what happens to good people sometimes people make them so whatever till they lose sight of what they're supposed to be doing and they get in their flesh and then they lose out with what God was doing. That's right. And I don't want to be guilty of that. I don't want to be guilty of got my eyes on me or got my eyes on whatever. I want my eyes on Jesus. I want my heart married to his, my ear married to his voice. Even a whisper, I can hear it in my bed. I know about signs, Paul, and I've seen them. Without the manifestations of the supernatural power of God, Christianity is like any other religion. The only thing that sets you apart, or, or any church apart, the only thing is the power of God. That's the only thing that sets us apart. So we have to choose what we're going to do with it, how we're going to do it, and if we're going to let God be God in the house. I say yes we are. Yes, we are. In glory. He's talking about when they no more, when you're dead and gone. How many of you know you ain't got to die to have glory? Amen. Yeah. That's what the word teaches. And I recognize that all of us will check out eventually. Some of us are going to check out later. <laughs> Some of us want to live longer than others. We believe the word says he'll satisfy us with long life. Some people don't ever do much for God because they're always looking for a cloud to split, a trumpet to blow, and Christ's return. So this scripture says what will happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye to believers who have died and to believers who are alive when Christ remain, returns. Well, the book says you'll be called up. Ain't that what it says? Yes. It said called up. Uh, could, I, could I propose just a small question to make you think about it? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, well, I'm telling you, that's how quick salvation came to me. Uh -huh. Jesus appeared in my life at that moment. So, And I'm not taking anything from the scripture. I'm just, my thoughts sometimes work in a, many kinds of ways. So... Believers who have died and to believers who are alive when Christ returns. So he's, he's talking about the final ending of all things. But to me, I, while you're living, why is your focus always on a trumpet blowing and the cloud splitting and you don't never do nothing for God? Right. 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 Go ahead. I'm just asking a question. I hear people talk about it. I preach all over everywhere and I hear saints say the same thing. Well, we just get to heaven. Well, why don't we just take earth over and just run hey, really on, for God? Yes. Hey. Why don't we make heaven come on and kiss the earth and we just walk in the fullness of what God has planned for us? I ain't got to wait and die and go to heaven to have heaven. The Bible says he'll make me to sit in heavenly places right here. And every now and then I get a little bit in my side and I feel it. And I know heaven is fixing to kiss me right where I am. That keeps the truth on.
most of them. Jesus. You're going to die. Can I share a thought? Absolutely. Um, I talked about going to heaven and being in heaven, and this, uh, talking about we'd be shedding tears. And he said it would be tears of how much God had put in us, the potential that we had, and how much we didn't do. Oh, my Jesus. Uh, you hear what he said? How much we didn't do because he put everything in the body of Christ that Doug's praying about, the body of Christ that we will ever need to bring him back, to have everything. He's going to have everything he paid for. Yes, he he's is. Gonna have, I, he is going to have it. But, you know, think about that now because there's none of us first in line uh -huh. has lived up to, to, to the body of God. He's putting us everything that we'll ever need. He'll sit and raise the dead cow. I don't care Amen. what it is. And it's his time. Do you know, it's, hallelujah, it's just time right now that supernatural is just natural. The natural things is just going, the supernatural it's just going to be the natural good. thing that we go every day. Wherever, and it don't have to be in the church house. Yes. It can be in Walmart. It can be everywhere you go. But because we are carrying the very life of God in us. Yes. And the same spirit that raised him from the dead dwells in you and me. Amen. And when you go somewhere, you know, I catch myself. Am I right? I catch myself going somewhere. And I say, you know, I forgot to ask the Lord, who can I minister to when I go Amen. in this place? And I forget sometimes. Amen. I'm after groceries and bread, but he's after souls. He's after the touch of life. He's after the heal of body. Every time, everybody's got it. They, there's no difference in the Christ in one of us. He, he, his, his life is in you and me. And I was in the doctor's office, and I saw this man walking with a cane, and I wanted to pray for him. But I didn't right then. But when I come back, the Lord made time, and I prayed for the man. Amen. And he acted like he just appreciated it so much. He was encouraged. Amen. And that's 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 the church. Get out in the church house and get out in the, wherever you're going and manifest the life of God. All right. All right. All right. Amen. He gave us everything we'll ever need. And they know I don't have to do this. Everybody is have the same. It's the same. They Amen. Know, they don't have no grandchildren. This no, we don't. <laughs> And the key for me, for all of you, is you have to understand God is bigger than in you than you even realize. Oh, Amen. 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 Yes, he is. He is. Amen. That's why Paul had to tell Timothy, stir up the gift that's in you. Because life causes that gift to kind of simmer sometimes, or we pull back sometimes, or we have situations in our life or our body and we kind of give in to it. But but you got to stir it up, stir up faith, stir up whatever God has put in you. So, you know, uh, my, this mortal, the book says, got to put on immortality, and this corruptible got to put on incorruption. That's a great funeral scripture. I've used it a lot when I'm burying the dead. Uh -huh. But I'm preaching the lively stones in here today. I'm teaching the lively stones. Hallelujah. We're building up a holy house. What will, the what will be the nature of the change that will occur for all believers? Uh huh. That's what I said. Well, it's all right. I didn't to it yet. <laughs> Thirty-one. What transformation will take place in, in its fullness when Jesus is revealed and we see Him as He is? We shall be like Him. Amen. Oh, remember, sometimes I tell you every morning you need to get up, and look in the mirror, and say good morning, Jesus, and kiss the mirror. And I know y'all think I'm just as crazy as I can be, but what I'm trying to get you to see is how deep Jesus is in you. Instead of seeing what's wrong with you and every time you have failed and every time you've messed up, you need to understand that, that he's still madly in love with you and wants to help you. He's going to help you beyond you. That's good news to me. He could give up on us, but he kept pursuing and chasing and running and pleading and pulling and wooing and all the words. The whole, the whole that God had a son and the son came to die because God wanted more than one son. He wanted many sons. All right. All right. All right. And we are the many sons. When you get born again, you become a son of God. It's not gender related, y'all. You become a son of God. And you become an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Do y'all understand that? 
You got that peace. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you understand that, that you can be like Jesus. You can yeah. let Jesus work in yeah. you. Yes. And people can really see Jesus in you. Yes. Have you ever had anybody ask you, what is it about you? Yes. Mm -hmm. you ever had anybody ask you that? Yes. Imagine what they must have saw. <laughs> they saw a glimmer of something. You don't see it, but it's there. There's a light that burns in you. Sets you apart from the rest. And makes you a part of the best. What analogy did Peter use to describe how in the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we will be completely transformed into his likeness, completely following, until... Uh -huh, the day dawns and star arises, right? In your heart. So you got to get it in you before he can shine out of you. Amen to that. What a wonderful thought. Oh, yeah. Conclusion says since we need to be continually transformed from glory to glory, there is a problem when we are not in the process of being changed. It means we do not currently walk in the glory of God. This is, y'all remember that we were changed from glory to glory? It's never a descending, it's always an ascending. We're supposed to be living an ascended life. Instead of going down, you're supposed to be going up. Yes. This is the reason for the lack of transformation we observe in the lives of many believers that they are not being regularly exposed to the glory of the Father. And I've been in a lot of churches that I wondered where Jesus was. Surely no change is easy. It is usually difficult and painful. Amen. But if that is what it takes to enter into a greater dimension of God's glory, we need it. Are you willing to be transformed? If your answer is yes, God will take care of everything because he does not want you to waste your time following religious norms. He wants you to enjoy the higher dimension of his glory. Moreover, being in the glory is not just an experience for us to bank in. It brings about a transformation that allows us to minister to others in remarkable ways. Jesus came to earth to show us how to reach out to others with salvation, healing and deliverance, just as he did. Let us be transformed into his image in every increasing splendor. I love that. So it's ever increasing. Something increasing is growing. It's not diminishing. It's getting bigger. And that's what he has given to us. So let's pray the prayer of activation together. Father of glory, fill us once again with your Holy Spirit so that we may be like the sun that shines even brighter unto the perfect day. Impart to us the knowledge of you, enabling us to be renewed in that power every day according to the image of Christ in his glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Anybody? Yes. Have, uh, can you guys pray for me? I'm having a swollen attack. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Absolutely. Stay right there. Amen. Thank you, Father. You brother, gather around me.